Okay, now you're just going to have to bear with me a little second here first, give you a bit of background. In summer 2009, the missus decided we had to have a conservatory on the house. I've got no idea why, and I've got no idea what you're supposed to do in a conservatory, but she wanted one, so we got one built. And by the time it was finished, winter had come around. So here I am, a couple of days before Christmas, sitting in the conservatory looking at that space, thinking, you know what that needs? It needs a television, so I got one. Now, bearing in mind that this isn't really my room, I had to get something a bit inconspicuous. I decided to get a white television to fit in with the decor. I got a Samsung LE22 B541. Now, it's only 22 inch. I really wanted something like a 26 inch for this space, but Samsung only do this particular television in white in a 22 or a 32, and a 32 inch would have been too big for the space. Now, here's where I hit a bit of a snag, because I've got no video signal at all coming into the conservatory. I've got no aerial socket. Uh, also, I've already got Sky Multiroom. In the lounge, I've got a Sky HD box, and in the bedroom, I've got a Sky Plus box. I could, I suppose, send one of these through a video sender, but I've had some video senders before, and they really mess up your Wi-Fi, and they're not very good at all. I could have used a Sky Eye, I suppose, but that sends everything down an RF lead, which, as I mentioned, I don't have. So I've got one of these things instead. This is a Slingbox Solo. The Slingbox takes regular analog audio and video inputs and translates them into digital video that can be viewed either over the internet or via Wi-Fi. Now on the front of the Sky Plus box in the bedroom here you'll notice an infrared emitter which goes into the back of the Slingbox. This enables it to change the channels from the remote destination. And the rest of the sockets in the back are pretty standard. The network cable here on the right goes all the way through a wall into another room and into the back of my Apple Airport Extreme. Now this is a wireless end device which enables me to send the best quality video possible. It only has to go a few foot down to the conservatory, but it has to be picked up by something at the other end. And that thing is this. It's an Acer Aspire Revo R3610. It's a little net top PC which uses the latest ION chipset to accelerate video and graphics, which is exactly what I need. Now I'll just talk you around the ports on the machine here which are brilliant. There's a power supply and a VGA. An HDMI, which is excellent, a network cable, four USBs. On this side, another USB. And on this side, we've got the memory card, and there's the optical out behind that sticker there. It does work, it's just got a piece of white tape over it. There's a headphone socket and a microphone and an eSATA port. And then behind this piece of rubber here, there's yet another USB. Now the model I got was the base model in the 3610 range which runs Linux and comes with one gig of memory and it has wireless B and G networking. Now I needed wireless N and I needed Windows 7 and for that I needed at least three gigs of memory so I had to take it apart. Now this screw I'm removing is behind a sticker that says you're invalidating your warranty when you take it out. Now that's the only screw in it. I've sped this process up so that you don't get bored but as you can see I'm working a credit card around the edge here and snapping it open bit by bit. Now it makes some pretty worrying cracking sounds while you're doing this and it makes you think that you're breaking it. And to be honest, you've got to be pretty careful with it and work your way around slowly because you don't want to snap any of the plastic lugs off. Although eventually, after you took a bit of time about it and just work your way around, it will come into two halves. Now it's just like a standard laptop inside really. You've got a two and a half inch hard drive and you've got uh, standard laptop type memory. And uh, down the bottom here is where the uh, Wi-Fi card lives. Here's the one that came out of it. Um, they're pretty easy to swap over these things, they're just, uh, just plugged straight in. Uh, the only tricky bit is that these, there's these two little um, copper lugs on the top which the aerials have to plug into. And you have to be quite careful not to sort of damage your aerial while you're doing this. Um, there's, there's two aerials, there's a black one and a grey one there and those just plug on the top. Now getting the memory out is pretty simple as well, it's just if, if you've ever took memory out before it's just as easy as this. Um, nothing to it, that's the 2 gig stick that I put into it which uh, brings it up to 3 gigs and it just clicks in there nice and neat. Putting the case back together is really easy, you just uh, line it all up and then uh, click around the edges bit by bit until it fits back together again. The Revo comes with a nice wired USB keyboard and mouse set. The keyboard's quite pleasant and the mouse is alright as well, although it's a little bit small. But for my purposes I needed to go wireless. Now when I found this it seemed ideal. It's the Logitech Denovo Mini Bluetooth keyboard. However, when I read the reviews online it seems to have big reliability issues and also it costs £90. 
So I got this for £30, it's an RF wireless trackpad and keyboard. The trackpad's at the top with the two mouse buttons below. The keyboard on this is absolutely shocking though, it's poorly laid out and very difficult to use. Entering a web address for example is a painful experience and trying to type any paragraph is just a no-go. So I'm still on the lookout for a small combined portable wireless trackpad and keyboard. Now one of the Revo's tricks is that it can attach to the back of a monitor using a visa mount. A visa mount is basically just four screw holes in a square shape. The Samsung television that I bought has these holes on the back, which means that you can attach the Revo to it. Now you'll notice on the right hand side there there's a bit of a mess. That's me. I've taped the power supply to the back of the monitor to make it look nice and neat from the front. Uh, the mount that's at the top here is uh, it's got like spring loaded clips that hold the Revo in place and you can adjust it up or down depending on the size of your monitor. You want to get the power button just above the top of the screen so you can actually turn it on or off. This screen may be a little bit small for the Revo with it being 22 inch it does stick up quite a bit. Now I've attached the power supply and the HDMI lead so let's see what this thing can do. Now what you're looking at now is a Sling Player application running under Windows 7. On the left hand side of the screen you've got a representation of a Sky Remote Control. In the middle is the currently viewed stream and on the right hand side are some favourite channels that I've already entered. The Sling Player software is actually quite clever. It starts playing a video almost immediately, although it does take a little bit of time to get up to the maximum quality. The maximum quality on the one that I've got is 640 by 480 and that's determined by the sling box that's been sent to it. There is a sling box pro model that you can get that can transmit HD video. Bearing in mind I'm only watching a 22 inch television and only watching it occasionally, sending S video to it at 640 by 480 is quite adequate. The bitrate being transmitted and received varies based on the kind of video that you're watching. Now football is rather a hard test for any kind of compression because of all the movement and it works fine. The on-screen Sky Remote Control isn't there for decorative purposes. You can mouse over to it and press any of the buttons to transmit the relevant infrared signal to your Skybox in the other room. This enables you to access any menu or function on the Skybox and therefore you can do things like watch programs you've recorded earlier. There is a slight lag when you press any button although you do get used to this. Having a PC attached to the back of the television opens up a whole world of possibilities. For example now I'm watching the BBC iPlayer in HD. I'm using the latest flash drivers for the Iron chipset which are in beta at the moment and it looks great. Of course it doesn't have to stop there, I'm now running XBMC under Windows 7 at the current resolution of 1366 by 768 This is really good at streaming 720p video over the wireless connection from my networked hard drives. So now I'm just a few simple clicks away from accessing thousands of hours of pre-recorded high definition entertainment. I thought I'd show you how far behind the live television the actual stream is. So what you're looking at now is a laptop showing the stream held in front of the live television picture. So you can see by the scene changes how far behind it's fallen. Now this delay isn't consistent, it can go up or down, and it's based on the amount of buffer that the sling box and the sling player use. Of course this is showing you one of the advantages of sending your video through a sling box and that you can watch it on your laptop anywhere you've got a Wi-Fi signal. Equally, you could watch it on your iPhone or iPod Touch with a Wi-Fi signal, although the video on this is a bit choppy. OK, so let's sum up what I've achieved here. I can sit in the lounge watching a subscription channel from Sky, while the missus can sit in the conservatory watching a different subscription channel. Or you could watch the internet, or any of the hundreds of films stored on the network hard drives. So it might have cost quite a bit more than just putting an aerial into the conservatory, but by using the Revo, and the slingbox, I've opened up a world of opportunities. Thanks for watching.